Okay, doing an unpowered walkthrough today of this Loudon Boomer Mark II A single 3400Z amplifier. Um, actually, this was um, rebranded. I think Loudon Boomer was the people that made it, and then um, was also uh, sold by Holocrafters under the HT45, or vice versa. I don't know if Holocrafters made it or Loudon Boomer, but one of them made it and the uh, other one sold it under their own brand. Um, getting old. I used to remember that, but I forgot it. But anyway, it uses a single 3400Z. It can be modded for a 3500Z, which is taller, but I'm not sure one would fit in that um, chimney there um, for that one. So to mod it um, I might have to get a taller chimney if I'm going to go with a 3500Z and that 3400Z in it it's got about 20 megs of resistance going from um, the ground to the filament so I may try uh, running it on low voltage with the filaments and uh, getter it may not um, but anyway this is a walkthrough unpowered I'm going to start over here. It's a separate power supply. It comes in a nice case, but I got it out the case to kind of do a walkthrough with it. Um, um, high voltage transformer here. And uses a swinging choke, which is that guy underneath there. Um, actually, a lot of people don't know that a swinging choke uses more of the transformer. So you can get more, since you're using more use of the transformer, you can get more amps out of the transformer using a swinging choke. But normally nowadays, most almost everybody uses uh, just the capacitors bank instead of the uh, swinging choke. And the capacitors to give more voltage. But if you're actually looking for more power, um, the swinging choke would be the way to go. Um, get more use of the windings in the transformer with a swinging choke. Um, just a little relay contactor to turn the high voltage on when that's engaged by the um, switch on the amplifier. It originally used some 866 rectifier tubes which were taken out and that was replaced with this uh, diode bank. And there also was a little, those uh, 866 rectifier tubes ran on a um, 5 volt filament. And with the diodes and no tubes, you don't need that uh, 5 volt filament to run the um, 866 uh, filament. So that was taken out too. After the swinging choke, it has a 8UF uh, uh, oil field capacitor. Um, over here you got the uh, bleeder resistors and a metering resistor over there and that's it all that is for the um just the high voltage of this amplifier and we'll turn it over underneath here we got the covers off just for the walkthrough and um, you can just see the build quality of this um, amplifier the grids are directly grounded no capacitors no chokes no resistors in line directly grounded grid um, pressurized um, um, chassis under here um, all these resistors here is for metering for your voltage and your um, current and I believe this relay was added this amplifier you know I don't know if it was made in the 50s or 60s but it didn't have a changeover relay internally. Um, back then you would get a dial key to do it and I think somebody uh, added that relay for the input and over here for the output you know of it. Pretty simple not a lot of stuff going on. And we're gonna turn it back over here. And basically you got your big blower um, filament transformer for the single 3500Z safety interlock disengages power when the cover is off um, got your tube, your chimney your RF plate choke 
And what this does is it allows the um, DC to come in through the bottom and up to the tube. That's going to be your high voltage. But the RF cannot go back down through the coil, so it blocks the um, RF from going back down. So the DC comes through. RF can't go through. It's got these two resistors here with the little solid wire over it. That's your parasitic choke. That stops or hinders high frequency oscillations or parasitics. Then you got your uh, plate blocking uh, capacitor. And that does the opposite of the choke here. Um, this capacitor blocks the DC unless the RF come through. So you only got RF on this side. And then tune cap with the wide spacings and the lower cap with the um, closer spacings. And your tank coil here. You know, I don't know where it was. Um, Facebook, YouTube, uh, email. Somebody was saying, you know, how many windings do you need, uh, you know, in these amplifiers? I think that was Facebook having a discussion on it. I think they were talking about uh, some DNA amplifiers and how to mod them and stuff. And I was like, basically, um, these amplifiers for 28 uh, megahertz need about uh, four turns. Actually, if this was a dual 500Z, you would need four turns, but I believe this one has five. Five turns, because you need more turns the less amps you have, and with one tube you're gonna draw, you know, half the amps as you would with the two tube version. So five turns is all you need for 27 um, or 28 megahertz. If it was a dual 3500Z, you need four turns. And um, as I was trying to tell somebody on uh, Facebook, I believe, with the uh, Phantom 500s, all you need is about four turns of coil. All the rest of this coil is for the other ham bands. And if they're connected to this um, band switch right here, and for uh, 10 meters, Again, all you're using is this coil here, the five turns. It goes into the band switch and it connects it directly um, over here to the output or the um, load capacitor over here. And then that's to tap for um, 15 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, and then 80 meters is not tapped because it uses the whole coil or all the coils for 80 meters. Um, that's your um, safety uh, choke where if this blocking cap that blocks the DC fails and sometimes they do they short out and if you didn't have this safety choke once that's shorted that DC that is supposed to be blocking would come through and uh, hit your antenna and the output and you would have you know what this thing run about three kilovolts three thousand volts you would have that running through your system and possibly kill you so what happens is this choke again uh, take the DC and take it to ground if it uh, if DC happens to make its way through there that's the safety part of it but RF again can't go through this choke so the RF is, you know, this is basically invisible, but for DC, it'll short it out and then blow the fuse on the power supply and not allow the DC to go through. Um, same with this one. This one lets the uh, DC come through, you know, in its normal operation. And this one, if it senses DC, it just let it ground. But, uh, you know, it won't let the RF, you know, go to ground. Same with this one. The RF can't go back down through it. Um, Let's talk, try to talk about capacitors too, or how much capacitance you need um, for, you know, 27 megahertz, 28 megahertz um, amplifiers. You only need about 50 picofarads over here for the tune and about uh, 100 picofarads for the load, which is not much. But the rest of it, you need uh, a larger size cap with the picofarads for the other bands 
as you go up the bands, you know, from 10 meters to 15 to 20 and all that other stuff, you need more capacitance. So that's why you're going to have larger capacitors in there for the ham bands, which would not be needed for the um, 27, 20 megahertz band. And also for 40 meters, it switches in them two capacitors as well in parallel with the tune cap because to um, have a adjustable big enough to run 40 meters on its own it had to be a much bigger and of course more expensive capacitor it's pretty weird how they got this how they get the um, capacitors in circuit as you turn this um, tune cap you can see I'm turning it now eventually it hits um, kind of a stop and it turns this um, plate to connect to that uh, plate there, ching ching goes in there, and that switches in um, these two capacitors here. And then now that it's switched in, you can you know tune it and vary it. And then if you keep going, and now it's turning, and you see it's switching out. That's all the way down, and now you can tune and load without those. Um, 40 meter capacitors um, switched in. Never seen nothing like that before. And then for the load, it switches in this one for 40 meters, but it uses the band switch. When you go to 40 meters over here, um, remember I said this one is not uh, switched in, but it has this connect connection for not 40 meters, 80 meters, um, where it switches in that capacitor so this one to have additional capacitance needed for um, 80 meters but it's marked on the front basically uh, where these capacitors gonna tune at if you see that double dial there that's because that uh, capacitor I showed you is switched in and if you see 28 megahertz over here so I'm just gonna turn it around there and this one is marked too and it's at 28 megahertz now right around there I just want to show how much capacitance is using at 28 megahertz where we're dialed in see those plates are barely engaged if you can see them I'm turning them so you can see them they're barely engaged because you're using very little capacitance for 28 megahertz that's all you're using and again you would uh, turn it up for more and more and more as you go up the band but for 28 you need very little so actually if this was a single band you could get away with a capacitor that has a quarter of the capacitance of this um, tune cap and it's the same thing with the low capacitor well you're using about half of it but Again, as you go up the band, you're switching in more capacitance is how they do that with that one instead of using a huge capacitor. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to talk to there. Um, you know, pretty basic here. Your filaments on, then you can turn your uh, plate voltage on. Separate switch. One single meter, but it can measure... Um, um, let's go left or right. Your grid current, your plate current relative output and then your plate voltage you know with the single meter and um, plate voltage light filament light basically tune and load in your band switch um, one of the best built you know amplifiers I've ever seen um, too bad it wasn't the dual 3500z but um, I got this at the Dayton swap last year for a song and a dance so I was packing up and I had looked at it a few times, but I'm like, no, nah, you know, I don't need it. I got, you know, thousand projects already. Um, but the guy was like, make him an offer. And I'm like, I'll make you a lowball offer. And I did. And uh, he just wanted to get rid of it. And, you know, with the covers on and all that, it's a lot of weight. And um, it might not look like it, but I did some cleaning up on it, too. Uh, I'm not finished with it yet, but... Um, all in all, it looks like a very solid app. I just hope that uh, 400Z is good. But if not, I guess I'll just have to work in a 3500Z on it. 
All right, that's going to be it for the Loudon Boomer Mark IIA, a.k.a. the Holocrofters, HT45. Bye.